fellowship time with the king of kings and the lord of lords and once again this is reverend bb cummings and <laughs> reverend lon cummings at your service Amen. driving miss daisy praise the lord I'm, miss daisy. I'm the daughter of zion okay driving the daughter of zion who was miss daisy never mind <laughs> I'll show you the movie. I don't. Okay, I am. Um, okay, he calls me Miss Daisy. But I call myself the daughter of Zion. I call myself the daughter of the Most High God. I call myself the citizen of heaven. Yes, I'm black. Originally from Nigeria, Africa. <laughs> and now I'm indigenized. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am indigenized. I am Lakota. No, is that Lakota? Yeah, I'm Lakota. Lakota Cheyenne. Lakota Cheyenne. That's where Lon, you know, Lon's um, tribes, like heritage, tribal heritage, right? Native American heritage, Lakota. And his, her his uh, heritage, uh, other uh, white heritage is Scottish, okay? So, see, there's so many. So, the best way to describe you describe it is i'm the citizen of heaven praise the lord anyway welcome once again to our time of fellowship with the lord and today we're going to be talking about victory in the blood of jesus christ victory how to attain victory in the blood of jesus how to maintain victory how to walk in victory the blood of jesus gives you this the blood of jesus redeems you god you know sent jesus to die to redeem us from all our um, redeem us from every generational cause redeem us from the fall redeem us from anything from death disease infirmity okay and um, and we have to maintain this holiness because in Psalm 24 he said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof who can ascend it was a clean hands and a pure heart so clean hands and a pure heart righteousness the blood of Jesus cleans, purifies, sanctifies you, clothes you with his righteousness. So the, our prayer today is that blood of Jesus 
cleanse, purify me, sanctify me, consecrate me back unto you. Make me holy again. Clothe me with your righteousness and make me uh, strong to win every battle. In, in Revelation 12, 11, which is our key scripture, it said we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. In Hebrews 12, 24, it said the blood of the new covenant, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Okay? The blood of Jesus is what separates us from, uh, 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 you know, separate, uh, close us with righteousness, separates us from the enemy. The enemy cannot stand the blood. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus all turns us into the presence of God, the Holy of Holies. And by His blood, by His stripes, we are healed. He gives you healing. Yes, healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. You can be healed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, before we go deeper into that, we're going to worship. But I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to all of you who took time to uh, celebrate us for our, our, how many years? Our anniversary, 10 decade, years. Decade, a decade. A decade, yay! A decade. Thank you so much for your prayers. We love you. We appreciate you. And symbolically, significantly, 10 is, um, uh, 10 symbolizes authority, spiritual authority, responsibility, power. So, God, we have attained a, a level of spiritual power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you, thank you. I pray for you that God will continue to give you reasons to celebrate. Don't too fast. It's 25th. I need a right now. Okay. So um, God will give you a reason to celebrate in every area of your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I want to, um, I pray for you. This is, and then we are in the season of Av. Av the, the month of Av. The month of the, the Hebrew month. The Hebrew month of Av. It just went from Tamaz to Av. Yes. Tamaz, um, I posted it on my Facebook. So those are the biblical months, the real months that God set into place for us to watch and keep times and seasons. You can't keep times and seasons if your watch is on a Roman calendar. You could pay your bills on the Roman calendar, January, February, March, but you cannot, cannot keep into the sequence and timing of God that he talks about knowing the times and seasons yeah. when you're on the Roman calendar you must understand the Hebrew calendar yes. and what yeah. the months mean and what season and cycle that we're in right now according to the word and what's next week and what's next year do we get a cycle through again we don't want yeah. to keep going through the, the desert we don't want to keep going 40 years in the desert because of disobedience. But we get this journey every year. Mm -hmm. So in this month of Av, you have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to receive particular blessings. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll go over some of that with you. Yes. Yeah. So the key is, the Bible, of course, is your spiritual um, um, direction. Because say, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one coming to the Father except through me. The Bible is your key to unlock and lock any gate. Lock and unlock. So I don't know what situation you're going through, but the key is to consecrate yourself, get in the presence of God, and take authority. Because in the beginning, He gave you the power, the authority. And even when, when we lost the power, He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and redeem us. And so... You're not watching me today by chance. If you're hearing me, whether you're watching me live or after, the key is that God has set you apart. Just as He created Adam and Eve and gave them the power, the authority to dominate, to rule over all His creation, to have power, to have authority. The same way God has chosen you. So, but the point is, you know, this week God was speaking to me from the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 1 he said um, you know in the, the book of Matthew from verse 1 Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 it talks about the um, the bloodline of Jesus Christ it said the book of the generation of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham okay and he began to lie in the 
to line up or to um, display the generation of Jesus. Started from Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot. Hmm? Oh, okay. You were here yesterday? No, I'm the car. Which way were the you? Memorial church. Well, where were you when this gun was up? Uh, we were at the street fair. We were up on that corner. Oh, okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we had a terrible incident here. Father, we release your blood and your fire over this life. We release your blood, oh God, to silence every blood crying out, every blood shed, oh God. Let your blood, Hebrew 12, 24, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Let it flow, let it cleanse, purify, sanctify. Every uh, anyone that died, oh God, let your blood, oh God, yeah, three cop, indicate them. Three three policemen and a bystander were shot by a terrorist. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, someone um actually on this road in Fargo, North They Dakota. shot him right away too, but he was headed with uh, three thousand rounds and ten guns to the street fair. But he had an altercation with the police right here, and they took him out. But he also did shot, he die? And, shot and killed one policeman. Did he die? He died. Two others oh. were shot multiple times, but they're still alive. And a bystander shot twice. Oh, that the shootout died on the spot? Yeah, they caught the shot, shoot, shot the shooter right where he sat. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we had a terrible incident here in Fargo, North Dakota. Because... Um, and it was are, a Muslim extremist, and he was going to shoot up. The street fair. It's is. It's the American type of uh, the American kind of. Uh, it's the American kind of uh, suicide bombers. Well, here you can be suicide gunner because you can get access to guns, and he got access to guns. But he also had access to tamarite, which is something you shoot at for target practicing. And he has a car full of that. But he had yeah, some and that, that in itself is a huge explosion. I mean, the guns were the minimal part of what he was going to do. Those are just to protect you. So it's not gun violence, it's people violence. Yeah. And people that are lost and hopeless and outside the will of Christ, this evil influence can get them. And uh, anyway, back over to you. I'll be right back. So this is a terrible incident. And we're talking about bloodline and repenting because... When these blood, innocent bloods are shed on the land, you know, it's kind of like, because um, even in, in Genesis 9, God told, I said, there shall be no blood shed. That shall not kill in the Ten Commandments, okay? Talking about the number 10. The Ten Commandments, that shall not kill. God hates shedding of blood. Now, that's why in Hebrew 12, 24, it talks about the blood of Abel. He said the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant, the blood that people are in the blood of Abel. So the key point here is that this, uh, uh, the story was that the, the terrorist, he had some kind of name, I don't know, but he came out, the, there was an accident, a student who just arrived here six months ago, um, ran into a car, a standing car. So apparently the car was set up. So when the car was... The car was there standing so the young student ran into the car and um and you know had an accident so as the custom is here the cops came fire brigade ambulance they were all here to help the victims of the accident so when they now when they came here it's all in the news you can google it uh shooting cops shooting in fargo north dakota so they, they uh, while they were trying to attend to the victims of the accident, the shooter came out and shot the first guy, the first cops, and two other cops. Okay, the first two one died instantly. A 23 years old boy, very painful, very sad. Right here where I tell you see my guiding pictures, just right here where we do our guiding. So it's hit home. Alone was just at the. There was a street fair going on, so the apparently the the shooter was headed to the to the fair. We don't know, nobody knows. But he stops here, he shot. So, and um, a scenario started here, 
and before you know what uh, what's happening the 23 year olds that old died the other two they're critically healed in the hospital so we pray for healing and restoration and we pray for healing for the uh, for the cops family a young boy is 23 years old and we pray for the blood that we release the blood of jesus over the line um like just right there maybe if we can show it because there's so much flag many you know they were putting there's a lot of flag to identify the area just in front of me i'm looking at this right now so we release the blood of jesus over this place oh god let the blood of jesus cleanse purify sanctify this land oh god let the blood of jesus speak mercy oh god let the blood of jesus vindicate this innocent blood that was shed oh god jehovah have mercy upon our land have mercy upon fargo north dakota let your blood flow every blood in the foundation of fargo that is crying out virgins oh lord vindicate these bloods oh lord speak for this blood oh lord silent let your blood silence this blood in the name of jesus amen and as we're doing this remember i was trying to go through i was trying to go through um matthew one and you know before this happened the lord was telling us about overcoming by the blood and it talked about the generation of jesus everyone Every, everyone do have a generation you know you had your, your forefathers uh some of us here in america we had um the europeans that came and took over the land and some uh the native americans you know same bloods were shared even the blood of the the white people that came some of them died too in this and all is blood so the key how do we deal with these things because this blood this blood are uh, crying out from the foundation for virgins some of these blood they um they they are the reason why unless we repent and cleanse the land some of them are the root causes of a lot of um you know deaths disease infirmities causes so the key is to repent so if you if you have a pattern in your life in your family in your home patterns right like constant deaths uh, disease, infirmities, um, um, poverty, certain type of prob problem, addiction, and all that. Go check. But now, because we are on this live program now, we are going to pray and say, um, let the blood of Jesus, the blood, the sign up for Hebrew 12, 24, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant, that speak better to you. Asking the blood to cleanse, purify, sanctify I and you. The blood to disconnect us from any old covenant. First of all, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, first of all, ask him. Surrender yourself to him. Let the blood of Jesus, let, let Jesus have mercy upon you. Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Have mercy upon me. Let your blood speak mercy upon me. Today I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I surrender to you. Have your way in my life and take over. In Jesus' name, amen. So surrender your life. And then you can now go on this foundational repentance. So I repent of everywhere I've seen my generation. I repent of where my generations have sinned. I repent of all the bloodshed. I repent of everything. I repent. I repent, God. I release your blood to cleanse, purify, sanctify me, and let your blood clothe me with your righteousness. I enter the blood, you know, thy covenant with the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant. The blood was shed to, to redeem us back to the Lord, to connect us back to the Lord, to bind us back to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Say, I am redeemed and covenanted back to the Lord. Meanwhile, love us, like us, share. Even if we are watching us secretly, the blood is speaking for you. Like us, love us, share. God bless you. God bless you. I love you. So the blood will flow. So now, after you have redeemed yourself, the next thing, according to that Matthew 1, let the blood of Jesus flow into my generation. As we're reading the book of Matthew, we're prophetically redeeming our own family. Said, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Remember, God had the covenant of mercy with David, and God had a covenant with Abraham that through him, his generation, you know, will be blessed. So 
the key point here, and he started listing Abraham, uh, begot Isaac, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob, Judas, and he went on and on until he came to verse 15, Matthew 1 15. So as you're reading this, be thinking of your generation. Many of us don't even know. I don't know my own generation. I only know my grandmother. Yes, I've seen my, I, I saw my grandmother. I never saw my granddad. Yeah, I saw my grandmom from both sides. Yeah, my step grandmom from my mom's side. And I saw my grandmom from my dad's side. So I don't even know every other one. So you don't know them. But these people were real. And some of them did really bad things. Some of them killed. Some of them committed all kinds of things. Some of them did not even know Christ. So now that you know Christ, God is going to use you to plead mercy over your own generation and stop any cause that came from your bloodline. Yes, any cause. The cause is him that is hidden in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to nullify all the cause by his blood. By his blood in John 19, 30, said it is finished. But you have to take the position to end it. So as you read down, you come to Matthew 1, um, 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. So at certain point in their generation, at certain point in your generation, just like Mary and Joseph were chosen out of the tribe of David, yes, you, welcome my sister, God bless you, man. God bless all of you. God bless you, Cathy. God bless you, Mark. God chose you in your own generation, just like he chose Joseph and Mary. You can look at Matthew 1. I'm on verse 16. Okay, this is very prophetic. I've been praying this. I've been releasing the blood over my own generation, over my husband's generation, over the land where I'm married to, over the land where I was born, the land of my nativity. So he said, so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Okay? So you don't know how many generations you have. But maybe, no matter how many, the blood and reach of Jesus can reach to the very first generation in your bloodline. And who would he use? You. Me. So this is real. I'm also redeeming my own bloodline and my husband's bloodline long okay so in in verse um verse 18 look what uh, matthew 1 18 now the birth of jesus christ was on this wise when as his mother mary was um, espoused to joseph because they came together before they came together she was found the child of the Holy Ghost. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. So, when we're talking about this bloodline, Joseph and Mary were chosen out of their bloodline because of the covenant God has with uh, God had with um, uh, David and Abraham. So, at this point, these people were suffering. The Romans. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you praying over the memorial there? The Romans were... Give me a flyer. What? Give me a flyer. The Romans... Yeah. The Romans were tormenting the... Yeah. The Romans were tormenting the, the Jews. She's doing a live broadcast right now. And... and yeah, we're Hebrew teachers, so... Yeah. We're Hebrew teachers, so... Hebrew teachers, yeah, what you mean? They were... He, they were... We teach Hebrew. They, they were... They were Christ. You know. Hebrew. Speak Hebrew. Yeah, everybody speaks Hebrew. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> There's a lot of things yeah, going on around us. Say, uh, he, he not gonna know the pure language until he gets it. Absolutely, absolutely. 
But we, we teach a Hebrew version of the Bible. We teach okay. people in Hebrew. Anyway, so sorry about understand. that. We're in this environment where, you know, there was a lot of shooting. So there's a lot of people coming here to pray, to cleanse the land, okay? That's what is going on, okay? So anyway, back to what we were saying about our bloodline. That the bloodline that um, in the time of Mary and Joseph, can you imagine? At, in that time, there were the, the Romans that were ruling them. These people are Jewish people. They had their own culture, their own everything. But the Romans came and they were tormenting them and all that. Can you remember that when Jesus died, it was the Roman government that came to crucify with permission from the people um, of Israel, of the Jews. For that, we release your blood. I can't show them. Wait, let me. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, there's so much flag here. I wish I could show us. It's just a memorial. Don't. No, yeah. no, my, my stuff went off. Okay. <laughs> I have to hold it. It keeps going off. Yeah, sorry about. Don't touch it, Lord. Please, can you just leave it? I won't touch the buttons like you do, but okay. I know what I'm doing. Can you please leave it. Sorry about that. There were just some. Technical difficulties. I just bought her a brand new phone because this one's broken. Excuse me. No. <laughs> they didn't ask you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's a lot of things going on here, honestly. Um, it's just the mercy of God. It's just the mercy of God. I mean, it's so sad. It's so sad. But we believe that God, the blood of Jesus, will speak mercy and peace over our land. In the name of Jesus. And the testimony, you know, like Long was saying, is that he was some few blocks away from where the shooting was happening. Who knows? This guy that shot some the cops here, maybe he was headed to the fairground. He was headed there. That's what they're saying. Yeah, they're saying that he, he was just headed. He got distracted by the, the traffic accident and the cops blocking the road. So yeah. he just decided to try to shoot him and make his way through. Well, they took him out. So I don't know. So maybe there would be more dead because they said there were a lot of children, a lot of things. So we just thank God. So anyway, uh, we, uh, I, I mean, I just don't even know what to say. But back to our teaching. Please pay attention to this teaching. They're very, very important. The the uh, uh, the bloodline of Jesus Christ, you know, they were going through a lot of sorrow, a lot of pain. But that faithful day, that blessed day, Mary was as usual. I believe she was in the presence of God, and the angel appeared to her and said, "Mary, you are going to give birth to a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel. He will he will redeem that generation. His own her own bloodline." So I don't know what prayer you have been praying. I don't know what has been going on in your own family, in your own home, maybe death, disease, infirmity, all kinds of crisis going on in your family. But now God has handpicked you, like he handpicked Mary, the mother of Jesus. He handpicked Joseph, the mother of, uh, the father of, Je uh, uh, the earthly father of Jesus. And he used them to end all the pains, all the sorrow, sorrow that started from the time of Adam. He used them to end it. May God use you. Makenta and the replica. May God use you to end every generational cause, every bloodline cause, every whatever that uh, that is not working right in your generation, in your husband's foundation, in your own foundation, mother, father's side, any foundation in your land, in your nation, even in your ministry, as you're reaching out to people. May God use you to end it in the name of Jesus. When the angel came, he said, Mary. That had favored. May you be favored. May God found you worthy. Just like he saw Gideon too. He used Gideon to save his generation. To tear down the altars of his father's house. So when at, uh, uh, Joseph and Mary were called out, God used them to bring forth the redemption seed. The redemption seed, that is Jesus Christ. May God use you to bring redemption seed. Let your children, those are your children that God gave you, I pray for you. That you will be the vessel that equips them, prepares them, so that God will use them to carry on what God used you to birth. That's a deep revelation, right? God used Mary and Joseph to birth Jesus Christ. So you are not just you. He said before he formed you, yes, you watching me, he, he knew you in your mother's womb. 
before he formed Mary, he knew Mary, he knew Joseph. He knew that he was going to use them to redeem their generation. So you are not just watching me by chance. I am here to remind you of the, of the reason why God gave birth to you. Of the reason why you're going through all those challenges, all those pains. You know why? Because immediately uh, they announced, the angel came to announce to Mary that she would have a baby. And Mary asked her, how can this be? She said, remember to like us and love us. He said, how how can this be? Say the Holy Ghost. Somebody you are filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that the blood of Jesus will clothe you with righteousness. And the Holy Ghost will fill you up. To carry out that divine mandate. To empower you to go through whatever you are going through. Why? Because Mary, the moment they announced it, hell broke loose. Number one, how can she get pregnant? When she knows that she is supposed to marry as a virgin. One, so she broke that law. She's pregnant. Number one, so she's in trouble already with the culture. Number two, they now, um, they now ask her, Mary, you know you're not supposed to be pregnant before marriage. How come you're pregnant? They're dealing with that one. She now told them, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost impregnated me. Can you imagine that? Pregnant virgin and now Holy Ghost. That's, a, that's blasphemy. She did have Joseph to back her up. No, Joseph ran away now. No, but he told them that don't worry. Yeah, before then. Before then. She was, uh, I'm trying to lay a foundation. Yeah. Before Joseph, because Joseph ran away. If it's you, would you stay? Don't bow out. Somebody broke the, the law and the rule. And she's claiming that the Holy Ghost get, uh, impregnated her. Ah, ah, mm. it's too much. <laughs> that, it's short. Maybe back then they believed that, but you won't get that. Honey, they didn't believe it. That was why she ran away to Mother Elizabeth. They didn't believe it. Well, it's even harder to believe these days. Exactly. So she ran away to uh, this. So then only because it, I said that situation you're going through, God will send you help. God now sent an, sent an angel to go to, um, to go to Joseph and warn him. May you receive the angel. May you receive the instruction you need. May you receive the help that you need to go through that situation in your life in the name of Jesus. The angel came to Joseph and announced and said, just said, please go and take that woman, Mary, because she is, she is the one that uh, she is carrying. What she's carrying is of me, okay? God, what is carrying is of me, and so Joseph had to obey. I pray for you that God will give you your own Joseph in your marriage. May your husband be a Joseph, in, you know, to carry you, to carry the vision, to support you. May you be a Mary that will stand with God no matter what. We stand with God to accomplish His will and purpose in the name of Jesus. The same thing when um um um. So the angel was giving Mary, gave Mary instruction at every point in time. Gave Joseph instruction at every point in time. They had instruction. May you receive the instruction, the word that you need for that situation in your life. Physically, spiritually, financially, maritally, for your children. May you receive that word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And if you're waiting for your own life partner or your children are waiting for their own life partner or your ministry members are waiting for their life partner, I pray that they will not miss the bone of their bone or the flesh of their flesh, according to Genesis 2. But that God will give them a Joseph. A Joseph. You know, like my marriage is very prophetic. When I was waiting on the Lord, there were so many suitors, but um, so many things were happening I didn't understand. You know? Everybody, almost everybody that came in contact with me wanted to marry me, but God would be saying no, no, or something would just be happening. And so God gave me a revelation. He said, you're going to marry a Joseph. Good work. Mm -hmm. You're going to marry a Joseph, and so God sent um, him, a, um, sent Joseph to come and support Mary. I pray for you that God will send you that helper in the name of Jesus. We're going to make it very brief today, so we're going to pray. I want you to join us as we pray for you. We connect our faith to your faith that no matter what is happening, we connect our faith with you and we release the blood of Jesus from the fourth generation to this very generation. If you're in the land of America, we release the blood over the land of America, over the bloodline from the beginning, the first generation, over the Native Americans, over the Americans, oh God. Every blood crying out for vengeance, let the blood of Jesus cleanse, purify, sanctify. Let the blood of Jesus silence every other blood. Let the blood of Jesus speak for you, speak for us. 
speak for the land, speak for the nation in the name of Jesus. Let him end every affliction, every death, every disease, every unfruitfulness. Uh, none shall be barren, none shall cast their young, none shall miscarry again in the name of Jesus. May you receive the power to be fruitful in every area. May you receive the power to make wealth in the name of Jesus. I bless you, bless your family, bless your home, bless all that concerns you in Jesus' name. Amen. So begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Just begin to turn the land. Continue to release the blood. Release the blood. Let the blood give you victory. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Don't joke with it. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Let me sing a song. So as we're, as we're worshiping the Lord, we believe that the angels, Angel Michael, they're going for war to end every affliction in your life. The Tournament 93 said, I, the consuming fire, I will go ahead so that it will be done quickly. As you worship, may the consuming fire enter your case. May the consuming fire enter your family and destroy the powers, the altars that are fighting you and speak righteousness and, uh, and peace over your land. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I told Jonathan. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Adonai, we worship you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Madre Brakada Baba. Rabrike Tekale Bobo Borigede. Masakale Baba. I pray healing. If you need healing, we lay hands upon you. Father Lord, let there be healing over your children. I pray total healing, oh God. There shall be no more death. You will not die, but you will live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. May the blood of Jesus speak for you. May everyone fighting you, every power, every Leviathan, marine power fight you. We release the blood of Jesus. We call on the consuming fire to crush the head of every serpent. Any serpent that is causing pain, sorrow in your bloodline. Let the blood of Jesus silence them again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, enter our homes, O oh God. Enter our bloodline, O oh God. Let your blood cleanse our bloodline. Let your blood speak for us. Let your blood fight for us. Consuming fire, arise, O oh God. End every affliction. End every pain. Bring peace, joy, all in our marriages, in our home, O oh God. Break the yoke of poverty. Break the yoke of pain of sorrow and give us blessings of oh God. visit you. Just like the angel visited Mary. May he bring good news to you. May he fight all your battles. Uh, may he give you instruction. Give you direction. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and raise his countenance of peace and joy over you and cause you to have shalom. Shalom means in Hebrew the one that destroys and, and gives you peace. It destroys whatever is causing pain. So I pray with you that the consuming fire will go to the root of your problem and it will destroy it and it will give you peace forever in the name of Jesus. And in this month of Av, one of the significance of Av is that God destroys the old in order to lay a new foundation. May Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom destroy every old foundation that is causing pain, sorrow, disease, poverty, sick, uh, uh, sickness, addiction. May God destroy it and give you a new foundation of joy, peace. May he, in this month of perfection, may He perfect you and give you rest on all sides in the name of Jesus. Please come back with your testimonies. If you have any testimony, you can inbox me, you can call me, or please love us, like us, share this video so somebody can be that can be blessed somebody can save their bloodline through this revelation the blood is the key to ending that affliction i release someone over you blessed 
is it that is planted by the river. They bear, they bear their fruit in due season. From now on, I root you out from any wrong foundation. I plant you in the blood of Jesus Christ. As you are planted in the blood of Jesus, you will begin to bear fruit. You will begin to, to bring forth fruit of righteousness, fruit of peace, fruit of joy, fruitfulness in all areas. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom. I love you all. I see you uh, on next week on Saturday next week. God bless you. Love you. Shalom. Bye. Hey, shalom. <laughs> shalom. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Sister Katsi. Sister Bel uh, Bele. God bless you. Greet my babies for me, okay? Sister Jane, God bless you, ma. Greet your babies, okay? Shalom. And everybody, every other person, we love you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.